Brendan Ricks here with TJ Free. In this video, I wanna quickly talk about the computer system and the different tools I use, both hardware and software-wise, for creating tutorials and videos that I share with you. So we built this computer a couple months back on the, on the channel. I wanna quickly go over some of the uh, specs of this computer. We'll talk about the different peripherals attached to it, and then dive into a little bit about the software and the workflow that I have for producing video. So just real quick, the computer has like 16 gig of RAM, a two terabyte hard drive. All four monitors are connected to the same physical computer and they plug into a single GTX 1080 Ti graphics card, um, which is super powerful enough to power everything that I do. It's great for the video editing and uh, it really helps to have the four monitors for workflow. Um, as far as the software I'm using, the host system is Solus OS. So it's running a Solus, it's a version of Linux uh, and then on top of that, I run VirtualBox and I virtualize different operating systems that I need. Um, so I can virtualize even like an Android phone. I can virtualize, right now I have Linux Mint virtualized in the bottom left-hand corner. I can virtualize Mac OS and Windows operating systems and have them on a different screen. Um, and so I can move the single mouse and keyboard kind of toggles between all of them. Uh, which actually works really nice with my Linux Mint setup. Right now I'm using that for my screen recording. So you may have noticed with my tutorials, sometimes I magnify the screen. I have a custom cursor with a yellow highlight around it. Well, that's only shown when I'm on that screen. As soon as I move the mouse away from that screen, it goes back to the system default for, for my Solus operating system. Does that make sense? And it, it's really helped me be able to provide a better quality video when I'm just screencasting an entire operating system. Also, I can reboot the virtual computer and show you some kind of lower level things without having to figure out how I'm gonna do the screen recording since it's just the screen that's being captured and then literally everything within there uh, is just being captured and recorded. It's not dependent on software from within Linux Mint. Instead, even if it were to crash, I would be able to record that crash um, and you'd see everything that I'm seeing. So it's really cool that way. I'm using the i3 window manager, which is a different way of managing your the windows that you have open. So for example, I can press some keys here and just open up, uh, every time I open up a new window, it sort of has these little dividers and um, it just optimizes that space and I can send those to different screens. So I'm never having windows over top of windows. I don't minimize and maximize. Instead, I just have different desktops that I can move these to and it works really well with the, the four different monitors that I'm using. Uh, as far as the peripherals I'm using, I have two cameras hooked to this computer. So it does have an Elgato video capture card with an HDMI input. So a lot of computers are going to have HDMI on the back of them, but it's only for output. Well, this card lets me feed video into my computer and I can record it. And so right now my two cameras I have hooked to an HDMI toggle switch. So I can only record from one camera at a time, at least on my computer. And I just press that button and it switches which one is being sent to that capture card, if that makes sense. Uh, for recording audio, I have a Rode microphone that I really like. It just plugs in um, via USB. It's got some different volume controls on it and I have my headphones plugged into that so I can um, listen either while I'm recording and hear how I'm sounding or after the fact I can use that to listen through. Um, I also have a set of desktop speakers I like to use, although most of the time I actually just use the headphones, especially when I'm editing um, my audio and my video because it lets me hear different subtleties and things that I can't always pick up um, on the speakers. What else? The keyboard and mouse are plugged into a USB switcher. At times I'll have a, an actual physical computer or multiple physical computers hooked to this. For example, I might have like a Raspberry Pi on one monitor and I can just press a button on that USB switcher and then I can use this keyboard and mouse on the Raspberry Pi and when I'm done I can hit that that button again and switch back over to using it my, my Linux operating system on my main computer. Uh, I have different lighting so I have here in the center I have a, a Android smartphone and this is a nice this is a really cool thing like everyone should really just get one of these it has a nice little LED light you can adjust the temperature of it and the brightness and different things and um, it has a little holder for your phone. So you, it clamps, I believe this one clamps onto a desk. And then it has the light. You put your phone in there so you can record from your phone. It's just a really good setup and the whole thing's customizable. Anyway, I'll include the link for that. Um, so I have my phone there mostly for just like monitoring if I want to see text coming in while I'm on the computer uh, or anything like that. Uh, but I can use the camera on that to record as well, but I don't usually do that. But the light I do use, I use this forward facing light a lot to put light on my face when I'm recording from the camera right below it, which is this SLR camera. 
Oh, the cameras real quick. I have a Blackmagic Cinema Pocket Cam, and I have a Canon T3 Rebel. Um, just both older cameras, but they work well for just doing screencasts if I'm going to shrink the video down. Real quick about the software I'm running on top of my operating system. I use Open Broadcaster Studio to record my screen desktop and also to record input from the microphone and to record input from these uh, cameras through my capture card. Um, and so that's really nice. I just do a full screen capture on a single screen. Then any windows that I move into there or anything happening on that screen will be captured. Uh, for video editing, I just finished an Olive tutorial series. So I was using Olive quite a bit. It's still a little bit underdeveloped for me for some of the features I want. I use Caden Live and Shotcut for video editing for the most part, both free and open source programs. Um, I have uh, Inkscape installed, so I use Inkscape for the thumbnails on my videos. Uh, and I use Inkscape for all kinds of little odds and ends, actually. I have GIMP installed just in case I need to like resize or do like a quick little touch up on an image. Um, yeah, that's really about it. I use Firefox for my main browser right now. Uh, I'm making a video really quick here on the Brave browser, which is pretty cool. Well, that's about all I can think of for now, guys. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them below. Uh, I really appreciate your feedback and love answering your questions. So um, go ahead and leave them below and um, look forward to catching you in the next video.